Chapter 6 of The Art of Kissing. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Burlinson. The Art of Kissing by Will Rossiter. Chapter 6 men kissing each other in france in england and in germany origin of the custom of kissing the pope's toe henry the fourth and his punishment kissing the feet of royalty an ancient custom kisses as rewards of genius the part osculation has paid in politics curious bargains for kisses what legally constitutes a kiss a kiss at auction giving fifty dollars to kiss edwin booth to an englishman full of his insular reserve there is something unmanly in the way men at a public railway station in france salute each other upon both cheeks and yet in england itself it was at one time the recognized form of salutation in hone's yearbook occurs the following passage another specimen of our ancient manners is seen in the french embrace the gentlemen and others of the male sex lay hands on the shoulders and touch the side of each other's cheeks but on being introduced to a lady they say to her father or brother or friend permettez-moi and salute each of her cheeks during the time of james i kissing was a common civility among men evelyn in his diary and correspondence sixteen eighty says in a letter to mrs owen sir j shaw did us the honour of a visit on thursday last when it was not my hap to be at home for which i was very sorry i met him since casually in london and kissed him there unfeignedly in sir walter scott's waverley after the baron had shaken edward heartily by the hand in the english fashion he embraced him a la mode francaise and kissed him on both sides of his face while the hardness of his grip and the quantity of scotch snuff which his accolade communicated called corresponding drops of moisture to the eyes of his guest among the germans it is no uncommon sight to find two great bearded and moustached giants kissing each other like a pair of turtle doves in july eighteen eighty eight when the emperor william met the russian czar at st petersburg the two rulers embraced and kissed each other several times there is no doubt however that germans fully appreciate osculation between members of the opposite sex in a well-known german novel this passage occurs sophia returned my kiss and the earth went from under my feet my soul was no longer in my body i touched the stars i knew the happiness of seraphim and it may be added that an enthusiastic old german beau of former times declared as the result of practical experience that kissing was an infallible cure for the toothache among the english the custom has become obsolete as for women kissing each other the modern rhymester says men scorn to kiss among themselves and scarce will kiss a brother women often want to kiss so much they smack and kiss each other as to the custom of kissing the pope's toe matthew of westminster writes that it was customary at one time to kiss the hand of his holiness 
but that a certain woman in the eighth century not only kissed the pope's hand but squeezed it the pope seeing the danger to which he was exposed cut off his hand and afterwards offered his foot but another authority says that kissing the pope's toe was a fashion introduced by one of the leos who had mutilated his right hand and was too vain to expose the stump in charles reed's cloister in the hearth there is a short dissertation on some curious kissing customs fra colonna enamoured of the pagan days overwhelms brother jerome with copious quotations showing the antiquity and pagan origin of many modern ecclesiastical customs kissing of images and the pope's toe is eastern paganism said fra colonna the egyptians had it of the assyrians the greeks of the egyptians and we of the romans whose pontifex maximus had his toe kissed under the empire the druids kissed their high priest's toe a thousand years b c the mussulmans who like you professed to abhor heathenism kissed the stone of the kaaba a pagan practice the priests of baal kissed their idols kissing the foot or the toe has been required by the popes as a sign of respect since the eighth century the first to receive the honour was constantine it was paid to him by the emperor justinian the second on his entry into constantinople seven ten about eight twenty seven valentine the first required every one to kiss his foot and from that time this mark of reverence has been expected the pope wears a slipper with a cross which is kissed in recent times protestants have not been required to perform the ceremony but to bend the knee slightly when the excommunicated german emperor henry the fourth had been humbled by three days of penance barefoot and fasting in the month of january before the palace of pope gregory the seventh he was admitted to the superlative honour of kissing the pontiff's toe kissing the feet of princes was a token of subjection which was sometimes carried so far that the print of the foot received the kiss so as to give the impression that the very dust had become sacred by the royal tread or that the subject was not worthy to salute even the prince's foot but was content to kiss the earth itself near or on which he trod the bible says and kings shall be thy nursing fathers and their queens thy nursing mothers they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that i am the lord for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me isaiah forty nine twenty three they shall lick the dust like a serpent they shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth they shall be afraid of the lord our god and shall fear because of thee micah seven seventeen kisses have been the reward of genius as when voltaire was publicly kissed in the stage box by the young and lovely duchesse de villars who was ordered by an enthusiastic pit thus to reward the author of merope in politics they have been used as bribes as in the famous eatanswill elections of the pickwick papers and also in a still more famous election for when fox was contesting the hard-won seat of westminster the beautiful duchess of devonshire offered to kiss all who voted for the great statesman and fully as famous and perhaps in a better cause was the self-denying patriotism of the beautiful lady gordon who when the ranks of the scottish regiments had been sadly thinned by cruel badajos and salamanca turned recruiting sergeant 
and to tempt the gallant lads placed the recruiting shilling in her lips from whence who would might take it with his own in england during the last century a certain candidate for a norfolk borough kissed the voters wives with guineas in his mouth for which he was expelled the house georgiana duchess of devonshire gave steele the butcher a kiss for his vote nearly a century since there have been bargains for kisses a french poet speaks of a country girl who required thirty sheep for one short kiss the shepherd thought the bargain a good one but the next day he was agreeably astonished at being able to get from the same girl thirty kisses for one sheep and then the morrow phyllis far more tender trembling she would lose the bliss was very happy to surrender thirty sheep for one short kiss strode a minor english poet of the seventeenth century writes about how he and his sweetheart played for kisses my love and i for kisses played she would keep stakes i was content but when i won she would be paid this made me ask her what she meant nay since i see quoth she you wrangle in vain take your own kisses give me mine again some time ago a mr finch who was in the jewellery business in newburn sold to a young lady named miss waters what was described as a beautiful set of real jet the bargain being that he was to receive in payment one hundred kisses to be paid at the rate of one kiss daily mr finch was to call at the lady's house every day sundays excepted to receive his daily kiss which miss waters undertook and promised to daily deliver to him for thirty consecutive days sundays excepted mr finch punctually called upon miss waters and duly received the stipulated salutation on the thirty-first day however mr finch made a formal complaint that miss waters was not fulfilling her contract inasmuch as she insisted upon permitting him to kiss her cheek only he maintained that this did not constitute a legal kiss and demanded that he should be permitted to put his left arm around her waist and kiss her in the highest style of art to this however a firm refusal was returned the lady offered mr finch's choice of cheeks but insisted that the contract would not bear the construction put upon it thereupon mr finch in great indignation brought an action for breach of contract against the lady this action raised several new and interesting questions among the most important of which was what constituted in the eye of the law a kiss the plaintiff set up the further plea that there was a difference between active and passive kisses that miss waters had promised to give him a certain number of kisses not merely allow him to take them and that giving kisses was an act which required the use of the lips the case was the subject of considerable controversy in the press and elsewhere but a compromise of some sort was brought about an equally remarkable kissing transaction occurred in austria in this instance a kiss was actually put up for sale at auction and publicly bestowed upon the highest bidder the occasion was a charity fete got up in the little town of Tarental on behalf of the poor of Agram. The well-meant endeavor of the benevolent ladies and gentlemen who acted as salesmen and stallholders to induce visitors to purchase trifles exposed for sale at twenty times their value had not succeeded. Business was not brisk. The public who had filled the sale were not in a generous mood and the organizers of the fate were disheartened 
at this juncture one of the lady patronesses a remarkably beautiful woman had what she thought a very happy inspiration she took her husband aside conferred with him a few minutes and shortly after with his consent offered a kiss to the highest bidder the sum paid for the favour to be added to the receipts of the fete very low sums were at first offered by the young men for of course the feminine portion of the visitors were not tempted by the opportunity and ultimately the kiss was knocked down at the relatively paltry figure of fifteen florins and eleven kreutzers the husband of the lady seeing the slight store set by the favour offered to pay the amount himself and take the kiss but the claimant had already handed over the money and as he refused to agree to the bargain being cancelled the kiss was exchanged before the assembled company it is said that a california girl disposed of her kisses at two cents apiece one week her receipts were eleven dollars and twenty-five cents at regular rates she should have had eleven dollars and seventy-five cents but she sold one job lot of twelve dozen at two dollars and fifty cents which accounted for the difference one devoted admirer made a special contract in consideration of his doing all his kissing with her he was charged much less than the regular schedule rates this traffic went on for some months without the knowledge of any persons except those immediately concerned there is a story to the effect that when booth was travelling on the boston and albany road one day having just closed an engagement in the new england metropolis he heard an expensively dressed handsome middle-aged woman back of him sigh and say to her companion i would give fifty dollars to kiss that man booth turned suddenly and looked at the speaker do you mean that he demanded fixing his fine dark eyes upon her and causing the blood to mount up to the very roots of her hair why yes of course i do replied the woman confusedly looking in a helpless sort of way at the great tragedian and at the smiling passengers well i accept the terms madam exclaimed booth solemnly and i stand by my proposition said the woman recovering her self-possession and rising she imprinted a sound kiss upon the actor's lips booth's face did not betray the slightest emotion he received the kiss stolidly and did not return it but waited until the impetuous woman found her purse and handed him a fifty-dollar bill he took the money thanked her and turning to a feeble shabbily dressed woman on the other side of the aisle who was travelling with two young children placed the money in her hands and with a courtly bow said this is for the children madam take it please and without another word he left the car End of chapter six